So today I'm going to talk about um, preparing your sample for GCMS analysis. So first, we're going to talk about the analytes that we can use. Um, so generally, we want to use analytes that are small, volatile, organic compounds. We want to have compounds that have different molar masses and different boiling points so that you don't get overlapping of peaks um, in your GCMS results and you get better separation of your compounds. We generally want to use analytes that are soluble in whichever solvent we choose to use. And we want to avoid using strong acids, strong bases, salts, metals, polymeric material, um, that kind of stuff, so that we don't destroy our column. So uh, next we're gonna talk about solvents. So you generally want to use solvents that have much lower boiling points than your analytes. Um, and you want to use volatile organic solvents such as dichloromethane, methanol, or diethyl ether. Um, and again, you want to avoid using strong acids, strong bases, metal, salts, or polymeric material because these will destroy your column. So generally, you use a 2 to 5% solution um, for GCMS analysis, which is basically similar to you adding 20 to 50 milligrams of solid into. Um, one mil of your solvent so um here uh i have uh different calculations for my um concentrations of my compounds right so for this exercise i have chosen um three different compounds my nitrogen containing compound is 4 dimethyl aminopyridine. My um, halogen containing compound is 4 bromochlorobenzene. And my um, hydrocarbon is O xylene. The solvent that I'll be using is dichloromethane. It dissolves all three and has a very low um, boiling point compared to the boiling points of my analytes. So what we're gonna do is basically prepare a syringe for um, injection of the sample into the injection port. So we want to pick a syringe that has a very straight um, needle so that we don't damage our injection port when we are inserting our sample into the GCMS instrument. Um, we want to pull up the plunger to see if um, the plunger moves freely and if there's any blockage, it looks like there's none. Then we want to make sure that our syringe is clean by washing with our intended solvent, which is dichloromethane in this case. So we can open that. So what we're gonna do is insert the tip of our needle into the solvent, pull up a few microliters, squirt it on a syringe. We're gonna do this at least five times to ensure that our syringe is clean. Fairly confident that this is clean. Now we're going to just use a Kim wipe to wipe the needle so that we don't have any solvent residue. Right. Now we want to pull up our actual sample into the syringe. So in this case, I'm going to use my nitrogen containing compound. I'm going to insert the syringe. Well, actually, first, I'm going to pull up some air into the syringe. And the purpose of this is so that um, when we inject our sample into the injection port, our entire sample goes into the injection port. So we pull up some air, right, a few microliters. And then now we're going to pull up one microliter of our um, sample into the syringe. That should be good. This always gets me. Right, so that is about one microliter. And now we're going to pull up another pocket of air after this um, sample. 
and this second pocket of air is to avoid premature um, expulsion of our um, sample into the injection port before we're ready. All right, so as you can see, let me hold up a paper. Um, this is a pretty bad close-up, but you can see that Our syringe has um, sample loaded in it and pockets of air. All right. So now your syringe is actually ready for um, injection of our sample into the GCMS injection port.